Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome to episode 111 of the Daily List Report. We've got an amazing show for you today. Don't forget, while you're here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell to be notified so you don't miss any of these amazing episodes. Today, we are joined by Karen Carr. She's a realtor with Keller Williams Coastal Area Partners and the owner of the Georgia Coast Homes team. She's based in Savannah, Georgia, which is a lovely part of the country if you've never been there before. She's a certified military residential specialist, which is awesome. It's actually a big part of her business. We're going to touch on that a little bit today. Uh, She's a 2011 president of the Women's Council of Realtors for a local chapter. She's been in the industry for 15 years. Importantly, she runs two very successful YouTube channels, which I'm going to pull up for you right now real quick, and then we're going to talk to her all about this. The first one is Georgia Coast Homes by Karen Carr. Again, we're going to link to that below. Click that link, check out the content and subscribe. This content, as she's going to elaborate on, is more consumer oriented. But what's interesting about Karen is that she also runs another YouTube channel. This one is just under Karen Carr. Click on the link below to check this out and subscribe to it. And this one is really geared towards agents. So actually the first person that we've talked to on the show who runs two YouTube channels, that's going to be interesting to understand, you know, why she's doing this, how this is part of her strategy. But Without further ado, let me introduce you all to Karen. Karen, say hello to the agentpreneurs of List Reports. Well, hello, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Super happy to have you, Karen, really excited. Um, So why don't we start here? I love it when our guests take a moment to introduce themselves. I want our audience out there to get a chance to know a little bit about who you are. So why don't you tell us who Karen Carr is? You bet. I got licensed in 2005. I was in Northern California. And when our second child was born, we decided that we were all the way in California and all of our family was on the East Coast. So we decided there's never a good time to move. May as well just do it now, right? So in 2013, we moved to Hilton Head, South Carolina. We had just gotten there and gotten established. I had to get licensed. I had joined a brokerage, just started working. And then we decided to move to Atlanta. So after 15 months in Hilton Head, we went to Atlanta. Now I'm starting over for the third time in my real estate career, wow. and which was crazy. And then two years later, we did it again, just because, hey, I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's just keep relocating, shall we? So we moved to just Savannah. Keep starting over, right? Why not? Oh my gosh. Like, remember when you first get licensed, how hard it is. Now do that every couple of years because you're going to a new area where you have no name recognition. You have mm-hmm. no market share. Nobody sees your signs in the front yard. You don't have a sphere because you're in a new city. Yeah, it was it was quite challenging. And so that's what led me to start making YouTube videos, which we'll talk all about. But absolutely. I've now been in Savannah since June of 2017. And YouTube is the best lead generation strategy that I have ever discovered. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't do it sooner. So you know what's interesting about YouTube, Karen? I'm curious to get your perspective on it, right? Is that, you know, for for us, you know, this show is kind of a labor of love, right? We have a whole core business, right, that we run every single day. And this is just something because I love to a talk to amazing agents like yourself. Um, and we love to share this knowledge with our audience. What I've seen, right, anecdotally, because I started this show on Facebook, we were doing Facebook lives five days a week, is that the level of engagement measured by time on YouTube is so much better. Like it's massive. I think I looked at the Facebook data and it was like, I don't know, 60 seconds of average engagement, right? And on YouTube right now, we're getting like 10 and a half minutes, 11, 12 minutes. And I was like, man, that's a lot of time that somebody gets to spend with my silly face every day, right? And the brand that we're trying to put out there. So curious to get your perspective on that. Oh, 100%. And why is that? It is because YouTube is a search engine. It is not really social media, in my opinion. The people who go to YouTube are looking for that video. The people on Facebook were not looking for it. It just showed up in their timeline and they might say, oh, this is kind of interesting. And they watch it for a second or two, but then, you know, they were in the middle of doing 90 other things. They were standing in line at the grocery store and they were just scrolling on their phone. They weren't really prepared to watch a 10 or 20 minute video. But if they're on YouTube and they're looking for it and they click on it to watch it, as long as they like the content and you're being interesting, they'll stay for a good long time. And the intent of the person that's watching the video is a bazillion times higher when they're on YouTube. So yeah, that was the main reason why I decided if I'm going to spend the time to make a video and we all know that we need to be making video, it's really not an option anymore. You got to get over your fear of being on camera and start making video. 
But if I'm going to spend the time to do it, I want to put it where it's going to get watched. And my thing with Facebook is that it'll say, oh, you got 1,700 views. And I'm here to say, no, you didn't. That's a totally false number because here's what happens. They're on their phone and they're scrolling and they go, what? Yeah, it's under the kitchen sink. It's behind <laughs> the garbage can. And then they keep scrolling and Facebook says that was a view because you stopped for more than three seconds. And it's even insane. And it even, and even, sorry, Karen, just, just to further that, right? So you're right. That's what they count as a view. They have a thing called a view through, I think. I'm going to mess this the up. Through play. Through play, which is what, 10 yeah. seconds? I think it's 10, 10 seconds, seconds for a three play, which is insane. Right. That's not 10 engagement. seconds of like, hey, everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Karen Carr, and I'm a realtor in Savannah, Georgia. Welcome back, everybody. And now that 10 seconds is over. And right. that's all you got. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, that's not a real. Whereas on YouTube, they don't even count it as a view until it's been 30 seconds. And you can see your watch time metrics where they'll say the average person watches it 30%, 40%, 50% of the way through. If you're doing above 50% of average view oh, duration, you're killing it. Yes. And YouTube loves that. And it's going to promote your content more and more often. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So I agree with you, right? And this is great to establish this, that, that YouTube is an intent-based platform, right? So let's talk a little bit about your first channel. I don't know if it's the first one you created, but it's first on our list today, right? So let's talk about Georgia Coast Homes by Karen Carr. And this is your channel that is more geared towards consumers. I have it pulled up here right now. Why did you decide to do this? And then ultimately, why did you decide to do two channels? But how did you get started here? What is the purpose of this channel for you? It is so funny. I was blogging and I really, I don't like cold calling at all. I'd rather do just about anything else, including eating, you know, Brussels sprouts for three <laughs> meals a day for 30 days in a row, than call Fizbo's and expired. So I started blogging because I enjoy writing and I read somewhere that if you embed a YouTube video in the blog post, the blog was something like 40 times more likely to show up in Google search results on the first page. So I thought, well, okay, I can make a YouTube video and stick it in the blog post. And I never even stopped to think that people would be looking for the content on YouTube because this was back in like 2016. I was really using it as a repository to hold the video, to put it in the blog post, to help the blog on my website rank on Google. And then after I got that first lead where they said, we've been watching your channel, we've seen all your videos, we feel like we know you already, we want you to help us when we move to town, we're selling our house in New York, we're moving to Georgia, we wanna buy a house, and I want you to be our agent. It was like, holy cow. Yeah. In the, what, 12 years at that point that I had been a real estate agent, I don't think I'd ever gotten a lead like that, where they were pretty much hiring me sight unseen yeah. off of the internet because they felt like they knew me already. I mean, I, I could have sent them my brokerage agreement to sign then and there electronically, and they would have signed it on the dot. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, so you got sort of, you struck first blood, so to speak, right? Like you got that hit and you got that deal. And at that point, was it just like, man, I'm going all in. I'm just going to yep. start creating content. And that is exactly what happened. Nice. And, and how, did you, how did you decide, how do you decide what content, the frequency of content, you know, sort of how do you program your channel? Well, so I was doing this when I lived in Atlanta and then we moved to Savannah and that's right when that lead came in and it killed me because he was moving to Atlanta. And I said, dude, I literally moved five hours away last week. You couldn't have called me a month ago. <laughs> so I had to refer him to somebody else. And he was very like broken hearted that he and his wife are not going to get to work with me directly, which is when I had this light bulb epiphany. So I decided, okay, I'm new here. I don't know anybody. They don't know me. I got no business. I have nothing but free time. What if I made one video a week for YouTube? And, and I just do that for six months and see what happens and it exploded. So because we had moved to Savannah and they have an active military base and my husband is retired Air Force, I wanted to attract people that were relocating into the area. Because I know when you get orders to go somewhere new and you're like, do you know anything about Savannah? Yeah. No, I've never been there. Oh my gosh, what is it like? Is it the Hicksville? They're gonna be living in the deep huh. south and I won't be able to understand anyone because their accents are so thick. and it's going to be insanely hot and there's bugs and there's alligators and you know they're doing all of this research because they just don't know what it's like here 
I wanted to be that resource for them to say, you're going to love it here. First of all, it's very inexpensive. You're going to be able to buy a house where you may have always lived on base before. Now you're going to be able to buy a house and it's probably going to be covered by your housing allowance. Like your mortgage payment could be completely covered by your wow. housing allowance. And you're buying it with no money down because you're a VA buyer. And then on top of that, we've got the beach and we've got the downtown area, which is so cool and historic. And Forrest Gump was filmed there. So if you've seen that scene where he's oh, sitting yeah. on the front bench, that's in Savannah. Yeah. We've got amazing seafood. We can drive to Disney World. It's only four and a half hours away. We can go to Charleston. We can go to you know, like all these different places. It's a great place to live. We have a major airport here. So you can fly to visit your friends and family. I mean, it's, it's going to be a great place for you. You're going to love it here. And let me show you around so that when you arrive in town, you feel comfortable. And the idea was that I would just be a resource for these people and not just showing them my open houses and not just showing them my listings. I'm showing them the area because they're not looking for the house at this point. They're, they're just looking about moving to the area. And it's that whole concept of the funnel. We get them at the top of the funnel and they work their way down and then they pop out the bottom and become a client for you. You need to capture them before they meet 900 other real estate agents when they get to town. So when they're online doing their research from South Korea and they find you, they say, I really want you to help me. So the day they arrive in town, they've already got representation and it's yeah. you. That's really interesting. Well, funny thing is actually my brother-in-law, who's Air Force, uh, was just based in South Korea, right? That just moved yep. uh, to Arizona. Um, so you said, you said a bunch of things there that I think are interesting, and I want to call out a couple of them, Karen. So the first one is this. You know, when you got that first lead off of a YouTube video, that was what year? That was 2017. Okay, 2017. You started your channel in 2016. And I have to think that back then your channel didn't have as many subscribers as it does now. Is that a safe assumption? Well, I started with zero, just like everybody. But at the time when I moved to Savannah, I think I had 18 subscribers. So, so, but this is the point, right? I think this is really interesting. This is, there's no guarantee of success, right, for anybody. But it wasn't like, you're not sitting here saying, oh, I had, you know, 100,000 subscribers and I got all this business, like this is so easy. But the point is that you created compelling, good content. Somebody discovered you, and even though you didn't have a massive following, they connected with you, and that's the point, right? And then they reached out to right. you, and you were able to get that deal. So I think that's important only because I try to frame this opportunity as, A, it's going to be hard work. It's work, right? You can't just put a video out there and quote unquote go viral, right? It takes hard work, but you don't have to have a massive following for your video to resonate with somebody and for you to generate business. So I just think that gives some level of hope. Um, Absolutely. I mean, seriously, if I got that very first lead when I had 18 subscribers, 18, and you know, these videos were getting 30 views, 50 uh -huh. views, maybe a hundred views over months and months at a time. You don't need to be a beauty vlogger with 3.2 million subscribers uh -huh. in order to make this a viable business strategy for you. Absolutely. And then the other thing that you did, which I think is worth pointing out is your channel had a purpose, right? You, you, you said, look, I'm going to help people understand what it's like to be here. Again, military relocation is a big part of your business. That makes perfect sense. And I think it's timely, frankly, because with what's going on with COVID right now, we're seeing a fairly significant exodus from tier one markets into other places. So, so now that people can work from home, right? Somebody could look at Savannah and say, well, what's it like to live in Savannah? You can show them what it's like. And those same rules apply. You're like, I can leave California and go to Savannah and own one of those awesome mansions on the parks, right? Just as an example. Um, so, but my point is that your channel had a purpose, right? You had a real purpose to it and your content was aligned around that. Is that, is that accurate? Oh, it's completely accurate. I really feel like if you are just trying to be the all purpose real estate agent, I'll work with anybody who wants to buy or sell any type of pro uh, property in any area of town, like anyone who can fog a mirror, I'm your girl, you end up, there's no unique selling proposition for you. And you end up not really attracting anybody because where they think that we're all the same. Like they just think that we're there to open the door. They don't see your value. When you have a very clear selling proposition, this is what I can do for you. This is how I'm going to help you. Suddenly they see your value. And the person who is online Googling it, when they find it, it just, it draws them in like a magnet and they become 
loyal to you now. So when they finally send you an email, they pick up the phone and call you, they fill out a form on your website, however that lead comes in, they've pretty much decided to use you at that point. And the very first lead that I got, even though that was my specialty, the first lead I got was a seller. And the second lead I got was a seller. Hmm. And these were people that said, come over on Saturday morning, bring the paperwork, I'm ready to sign. Like wow. when I, I didn't know that it was a come list me with the first one. Yeah. That was after I'd been in Savannah for about three months. I got a seller lead. I was all excited. I went over to do my presentation and I said, so who else are you interviewing? And they said, nobody. Well, like, we picked you. That's awesome. And I was floored because I honestly figured, okay, I'm new to town. I don't know all these areas. I've never sold a home in their neighborhood before. If they're going to ask me that, what's my answer going to be? Like, I got to have all of my objections handled. And none of those objections came up. They didn't ask me about my commission. I said, this is how much they charge. They said, okay, blue pen or black. You know, they <laughs> don't push back because they already have talked themselves into working with you by yes. the time they call you. It was amazing. Yes, that's amazing. So everybody listening and watching right now, right? Hear what Karen said. Karen, you, what you said just a moment ago about your sort of unique selling proposition is what I've been preaching almost every day, I feel like, on this show, right? And so this is critical. You heard it here yet again, right? If you're not known some for if you're not known for something, you're not known for anything. And people don't know how to differentiate agents. Karen, I, I have a, a guest on earlier, Mark Choey. Uh, he started a very successful brokerage in San Francisco. And when he started his career, he said, I want to be the number one condo salesperson in San Francisco, a huge feat, right? He literally moved into a new building, specialized only in that building. Karen, he was referring business across the street. That's how focused he was on defining who he was. He ended up selling 40% of the units in that one building and he became, didn't get to number one, but it was the number two condo salesperson in San Francisco for five years, uh, which is wow. a tremendous feat. But you know, it's, it takes that level of discipline and focus. I've interviewed former professional surfers who that's their angle, right? You have to find something that defines who you are. Otherwise you're not known for anything. So I'm really glad you made that point, Karen. I think that's tremendous. And it's so much easier. It's so much easier for you to think about if you know who you're talking to and you know what their challenges are and what their struggles are and what they're trying to learn, why are they on YouTube in the first place? Why are they on Google doing these searches and they're looking for the information? It's so much easier for you to then know what to make videos about because you know exactly who you're trying to attract. And on top of that, it makes it easier for you to become the go-to expert for that particular niche rather than just any real estate agent in your entire town. If he had tried to just be the number one realtor in San Francisco, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. There's about exactly. 3 million of them. Mm -hmm. I, used to be, I used to live in Northern California and the number of people that were a member of our MLS was insane. insane. So, but when you say, I am going to be the person that helps, you know, first time millennial buyers that don't have kids and they have dogs and they're only looking in this particular area of town, yeah, it becomes very easier for you very to attainable. dominate that area. That's exactly what they did, by the way, when they started Climb, which ultimately got acquired by Realogy, is they said, can we be the top brokerage in San Francisco? No. Can we be the top brokerage that is, you know, in this particular niche, right? Serving millennials and being tech forward. Yes, we think we can do that, right? And that's what they did. And it defined, you know, who they were and the products that they built and how they serviced their clients, et cetera. So, you know, Karen, let's move on real quick to your other channel. I wanna pull, I'm pulling it up right now, right? So okay. we've got, um, it says YouTube for agents. Quit, quit chasing business and attract it instead. So talk a little bit about the purpose of this channel. Again, it's linked below. Make sure you subscribe to this, all of you listening and check it out. But talk a little bit about this channel and frankly is how you run two channels. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's hard enough to run one, let alone two, but luckily now I have help. So I'm not trying to do it myself. At the beginning, I had no aspiration of having a second channel, but I was getting calls daily and usually multiple times a day from agents saying, I've been following your channel. Is this working for you? Are you actually getting business from doing this? And would you teach me how? And I said, are you kidding? I don't even have time to brush my hair in the morning, let alone teach you how to do this. Like yes. I am on fire right now. And eventually 
after many months of, you know, people requesting it, I came up with a group coaching program and said, I don't have time to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I could probably do a group environment. So then I was making videos for agents, but I was still putting them on that old channel. Mm. And I was not taking my own advice. I was not having a very clear focus of that channel. Yes. Because if I'm trying to talk to the person who's moving to Savannah and wants to buy a house, and I'm talking to the real estate agent who wants to start making videos, those are two completely different audiences. And one of my good friends said, you have to do a second channel. And I fought her for a long, long time. And finally I said, okay, fine, I will make a second channel. So then I started making content for that channel that was specifically for agents and loan officers who want to start using video in order to get inbound business. And now as of next week, I am out of production in real estate because that part has completely exploded. Wow. I formed a team. We expanded into other markets. So now like all of these leads that come in from the Georgia Coast Homes channel, I just give those leads to my agents and they are the ones working them. And I'm now spending all of my time teaching and being guests on shows like yours. That's fantastic. I love that. And you know, here's what's interesting. And I want to make sure I want to get your perspective on this. So I had a guest on uh, recently. She's actually coming back. Her name is Lloyda Velasquez. Uh, she's yeah, Lloyda. Oh, you know Lloyda. Okay, so yeah. Lloyda's been on the show. She's tremendous. She's coming back on the show, I think maybe even next week. Um, and she has a very successful YouTube channel, as you know, yes, right? Yes, she does. And she targets agents with it. And what's been really interesting about that is it's a great way to give back, but it's been a massive source of referral business for her, right? She's got yeah. agents all over the country who are watching her and who... They have a buyer, for example, or a seller lead, you know, who's in Southern California, they call Loida. So it's actually a great way to generate business as well. Oh, it totally is. I get referrals all the time from agents that found my YouTube channels, whether it was the agent channel or the other channel, they now know where I'm located and they say, hey, I got somebody that's moving to Savannah. Can I send you a referral? It's like, yes, please. Yes, that's awesome. It's also this YouTube club is kind of fun too, right? Because everybody I talk to is like, oh, I know Lloyd, oh, I know so-and-so, you know, it's right. just kind of interesting and, and kind, of, uh, kind of a fun little world that we're living in here. Um, so, you know, this was super helpful, Karen, right? So you've talked about, you know, kind of how you got started. You have the sense of purpose for your channel is so important because it makes it easier to know what kind of content to create. You've now, it looks like, gotten to a point of success with it where you've put your team together and you're sort of working on coaching and building great content for this. What's your advice for an agent who's saying, love it, like, I want to do this too? Where do they get started? Oh, all right. So create a YouTube channel and decide who you want to attract with this channel. What will your area of expertise be? It's not your town, because if that were your specialty, then every real estate agent in town would have the same specialty. Mm -hmm. So go deeper than that. Pick something that you would like to talk about a lot, because that's what you're going to be talking about on this channel. And that's the type of client that you would enjoy working with. And then start making content where you're you're saying okay what would this person want to know if they were googling because your youtube videos absolutely can show up on the first page of google search results they're googling not not looking on youtube they're on google and your videos are showing up it's pretty awesome what are they searching for what are they looking for so that when your video shows up they go oh yeah that's exactly what i was looking for and oh by the way she happens to be in my market so this is somebody local cool click they watch the video you have to be super helpful in the video. Give, 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 give without asking for anything in return. Don't sell. Don't put your phone number on the screen. Don't say, if you know anyone looking to buy or sell, call me. Here's my phone number. Here's my website address. Like, don't be asking, just offering all of this valuable information. And then at the end of the video, you do want to have some sort of call to action. Most of the time, it's watch another video. Because if they do, you get more FaceTime with them. They're getting to know your personality even more. And it's telling the YouTube algorithm that people like your content and they're going to keep watching it. So YouTube's going to keep suggesting your content to that person over and over again. It's totally free retargeting. You don't have to pay for this. Yes. But if somebody watches video A, then they watch video B, then they log off. They go have dinner. The next day they go to work. They come home. They log on to YouTube. Your video gets shown to them hey, you liked the other ones, you should watch this one now. It's completely free retargeting, so take advantage of it. And then maybe 25% of the time, say, 
So now you know all about blah, 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 but do you know this? Well, I've got a free guide for you. Click the link below, go to my website and download this free thing. So you're offering them a seller's guide, a buyer's guide, a relocation guide, a checklist, a cheat sheet, an ebook, whatever it might be. And they have to put in their name, email, and phone number in order to get it. And then when they do, you get the lead. So you're giving them tons and tons of value with no expectation of getting anything in return. And as a result, you get a lot in return. You get the best clients you will ever get in your whole life. Wow, that's awesome, Karen. I can tell why you're successful at this, where <laughs> you and I are very aligned on a lot of these things. The thing that you said right there is so critically important, which is value first. Always value first. Give without any expectation of return. And as Karen just said, you're gonna get it in spades later if you do it right. And I, I see this mistake made so often with these really super salesy things. and. You gotta be in it, you gotta commit to this for the long haul, right? You're gonna have to invest and invest and invest and know that you're putting great content out there and it will be rewarded. But thank you for saying that, Karen, value first. And frankly, this idea of the, the ebook, you know, that is a tried and true tactic, right? Across SaaS businesses, technology companies, sales teams, whatever, right? It applies pretty universally. You can create a piece of content, you can get a registration to get that information, you can build that database. And some people I've spoken to, Karen, have separate email campaigns. They send out newsletters, right? So, you know, some people might look to augment their strategy with a newsletter that goes out that has some of these tips and ideas and links to your videos or what's happening in the market or community events, whatever it might be, but it's a strategy that unfolds over time. Um, yep. gosh, and Karen. it may not oh, be nearly yeah, as long as you think. I mean, wow. I. I, I have coaching students who got leads after their third video. And then I have people where I'd say the average is probably three to six months. You should really expect that you're going to have to make consistent content for three to six months before you get something back. But you know what? It took you, let's say it took you half an hour to film the video. And then it took some time to edit it. You had to upload it. You had to make a nice custom thumbnail. You had to write a description. Let's say that that whole process took you four or five hours. Mm -hmm. If you could make six figures in GCI over the next two or three years from that one video, that sounds like a pretty good return on pretty time. Pretty good return. I couldn't agree more. Karen, um, this has been a lovely conversation. I, again, it goes, I told you, it goes by fast. We've been talking for almost 30 minutes. It feels like we've been talking for five minutes. Is there anything that I didn't touch on that you wanted to cover today? Ah. Uh, I, I guess my main thing is that YouTube is such a great lead gen strategy and most of your competitors are not doing it. So go to YouTube and search for real estate agents in your town. And, you know, I, I did Savannah Realtors and Savannah Real Estate Agent and Real Estate Agent in Savannah and living in Savannah and moving to Savannah and all those things. And nobody was showing up in the search results. So you don't even have to be amazing on camera if you're the only one making that kind of content. And even if there are other people in your market who are doing it, if you have a different specialty than they do, that's fine. There's room for everybody. But most people are not. Most people are too chicken to get on camera or they don't want to have to edit the videos. So they'd rather just do a Facebook Live. And you know what? That's cool. If that's your thing and it's working for you, by all means, keep doing it. But if you've been making Facebook Live videos for weeks and months and you're not getting clients from it, I would encourage you to consider YouTube because I know for a fact that it works like gangbusters. <laughs> well said, Karen. Well said. I love that. Um, well, Karen, I, I hope we get a chance to talk again. I actually feel like there's a lot of sort of subtopics here that we could cover. So if you're open to it, we'd love to have you on the show again in the future. Oh, it would be my honor. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Karen. Well, why don't you say goodbye for now to the agentpreneurs of List Reports? Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope I have encouraged you to go make some videos this week. Oh, you absolutely have, no question. Thanks, Karen, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, well, there you have it. Karen Carr, here's her channels again. So this is uh, Karen Carr on YouTube. We'll post a link below. This is the channel that is more geared towards agents. I think that's awesome. She also has her Get Your Free YouTube Strategy Workbook. So A, get that book, but B, understand the mechanic that's at play there, which is you, you give something and you get something in that context, which is a registration. And that's something that you can drip on or leads that you can talk to. And then she has Georgia Coast Homes by Karen Carr, link below as well. Again, check this out. This is you know how she sort of puts herself out there and creates valuable content to get people to understand what it's like to live in a particular area of this country. And that's increasingly important right now. So check 
check all of that out. Make sure you subscribe to her channels. Make sure you tune in again to us. I hope you enjoyed today's show. So until tomorrow, be safe, be healthy, be happy. We'll see you soon.